All right, so I got a new toy for the camper. I ended up going with some lithium batteries. So I had the stock uh, 100 amp hour lead acid battery and it worked okay. We don't go dry camping that much, but what would happen is when we would go dry camping, it would usually be for two nights and we'd get to the campsite, we'd open up the slide and then we'd you know barely use anything and then try to get the slide back in and I would get nervous that the slide would not close, but it did seem to close. So from then on, we bought a generator. And now we have an upcoming trip where we're going for three nights and no generators to Cranberry Lake. Um, so I wanted to get some new batteries. My camper's a 2021 uh, Grand Design Imagine uh, 2800 BH. And so being 2021 and being three years old, it's kind of, you know, time to start thinking about a new battery. So I said, let's go lithium and let's get two. So that's exactly what we did. There are several reasons why somebody would want to go lithium. I won't bore you with all the details. For me, it was really about two things, getting more runtime out of my batteries and being able to charge them much faster. Let's go take a look. So the first thing that I did, replace the, the box, right? And so here you can see I got a bigger, uh, a bigger battery box, just a double. But what else do you need to do? So a lead acid battery is 100 bucks. I'm gonna get um, a lithium, same size and power, but in lithium, um, that's 200 bucks, right? And now I wanna get two of them, so it's 400 bucks, right? Well, it's not that simple. So the other thing you gotta keep in mind is how are we gonna charge that? So a lead acid battery normally charges at about 13 and a half volts, where a lithium charges at 14 and a half volts. So what you gotta do is you gotta swap out the converter. And so what the converter does is it takes your shore power, your 120 volts, and converts it into 12 volts. Where converters usually sit is inside the RV behind the fuse panel. And so I went ahead, I took a look at mine, looked at the model number, and of course it wasn't compatible. So I had a WIFCO WF9855, uh, 55 meaning 55 amp. Um, but what I needed was the 9855-AD for auto detect. And of course it didn't come with that, right? So that was the first problem. The second problem is that it's located behind this wall. And so what happens is the wires running from all the way up here to the other side of the front storage, which is the kill switch, and then back out this side to the battery. And the problem is that, okay, that's an eight gauge wire. And if I were to send 55 amps through an eight gauge wire all the way over there, it's not really recommended. So I was like, well, I gotta rerun a new wire. And that sounded like a nightmare because when I went underneath there to try to take the underbelly off, like it's not just the plastic that's maintained by the bolts. You have propane screws. I believe there's suspension um, that's all kind of in, in with the same bolts as the underbelly. So I decided, I was thinking about it, and I was like, how am I gonna do this? And so the nice people at the manufacturer support said, um, you could actually just install it here. And so what I did was I actually moved converter. I left the old one there, as a matter of fact, I just unplugged the 12 volts. And so now I have this new four gauge wire that's running from here to the batteries because when it's charging, it will actually take all 55 amps. And that's what I was concerned of is having the 55 amps. So what I'm guesstimating is the 55 amps will only ever go from here to the battery. Uh, the RV will only ever take a max of 35 amps. And so I'm using the factory wiring to power back the fuse panel. And so you'll notice there's uh, another component in there. <laughs> so uh, the other component is 12 volts. Can you? See all that stuff? It's when I'm plugged into my truck. And so your tow vehicle, what will happen is typically if you have a lead acid in your truck or your tow vehicle and you have a lead acid in the camper, no problem, you hook it up, it does some charging, lead acid charges very, very slow. There's no, no issues there. But with lithium, what will happen is two things will happen. One is if the battery is dead, it'll actually suck more than say 10 or 15 volt uh, amps through the, through the tow wire. And so that's, that's bad because it could start a fire. The other thing is it could take, if it is really drawing, let's say 50 amps from, from the battery, because as soon as I plugged it up, I could see that those batteries were taking 50, uh, all 55 amps. The other thing is it could put strain on the alternator. And so for those reasons, you need to put some sort of protector. Um, and so what I did was um, I got this, what's called a DC to DC, converter. So this is the converter, right? And so what'll happen is um, that isolates it. So on this left side, it's the tow power. So this comes in from the input 
I just hooked this part up today. Yep, so this comes the input from the tow vehicle and then the output comes out to the, to the battery pack. And so what'll happen is, it will only take the alternator's charge up here, the input, which is only limited to nine amps, and then on the output side, it'll boost it up to 14 volts. So it'll input the 13 volts or whatever the alternator outputs. I don't really know. Um, but anyways, but it'll, it'll basically protect the tow truck and still allow me to charge, but it'll limit it to what my tow wire can, can run because I don't really charge my, my truck that much. Uh, excuse me, the camper when I'm towing, we don't do that much dry cramp camping. What some people do is they'll actually run another set of wire, and so in addition to your seven pin, what you would have to do is have a second um, wire uh, if you wanted to run more than, say, 15 amps. And I'm just not that fancy, so I wasn't interested in, in, in doing all that. To, to summarize, what I ended up needing to do is obviously replace the batteries, replace the uh, converter, add a DC charger or DC to DC um, inverter. Sorry, it's raining right now, so I'm gonna start packing up. Um, and it actually wasn't that bad. Uh, it was a lot of fun, but I'm also a nerd, so. All right, so let's talk about some of the challenges that I had when trying to install the new converter. First was, how do I find the converter? So let me show you what I did. It's pretty straightforward. So in my RV, I have this in the VH2800. I have the fuse panel, drop it down. You bring this guy up, bend it a little bit and it pops out. There's these two screws here. You'll take out these four screws, pop this plastic off behind it. There's four more screws. And then when you take all this fuse panel off, you saw a video where you can see behind it. So it actually wasn't that bad, but that was certainly one of my concerns was how do I find which converter I have? The other area that I was a little bit concerned about was how to get into the front storage. Remember, I wanted to put the some of the components, some of the hardware, the electronics in the front storage component uh, up here. And so how do I get from the outside inside? And so a couple things I thought of, one is can I drill through here? And the answer is uh, absolutely yes. So this is flooring with plywood. It's about an inch and a half, two inches. You can see the wiring doesn't go through this flooring. So if you do wanna drill through the floor, you absolutely can. What I did was something a little bit different. I actually came and there's some, I dropped the underbelly, there's some bolts along there that I actually dropped down. And so as I stuck my hand up here, I could feel the compartment. I could see where there was just a spot right up here. I could feel where there was no wood or anything. It was just this soft material. And so that was where it was. So what I did is I stuck a drill with a small drill bit and drilled right through there so I could figure out. So this is how I came through. So there's no holes in the ground. It just came through here, which is again, was just this very paper thin plastic, maybe not paper thin, but cardboard thin. And the last piece that I thought was, you know, a little bit concerning was the junction box. So how do I tap in to steal the power for that converter? This DC to DC converter in there. How do I get the power on the input side from the tow vehicle? And so it's actually pretty straightforward. Essentially what you do is underneath the RV, there's a typical regular home junction box. Way over there, you can see that junction box. And that junction box up there is exactly where the five pin comes, or excuse me, the seven pin comes in. And so I'll show you some stuff on that. But basically, there's just a schematic I found online. And there's a specific wire that that's all it does. It's just for the auxiliary. And so it was plugged in to charge the battery before. And so I just disconnected that and that battery, the red wire, I believe it's a red wire, it's the auxiliary power. All that comes is it comes from my tow vehicle and it goes into the input of that blue device, that DC to DC converter, that's it. So those were the three things that I thought were a little bit difficult and how I overcame them.